I'm B-Boy Bill, and today we're building this heated hunting cover. Let's get to work. I got real sick of my honey getting crystallized, so I figured I'd build a little cabinet here to keep it at room temperature. And this cabinet's set for 75 degrees. But if you guys keep your honey at a different temperature, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to know what you guys are doing out there. I'm going to build some structurally insulated panels or SIP panels. And to do that, I'm going to frame out the panel. I'm going to fill it with rigid foam insulation. And then I'm going to sandwich it together with a couple pieces of Luan. I'm going to repeat this process for all the sides of the cabinet and the door. Once the SIP panels are all built, I'll assemble the unit, add some shelves, put some electrical parts in, and install the door. I'll put the honey in here and set it at 75 degrees. Let's get started by ripping our 2x4s. This project for me is about 90% reclaimed material. So I'm using 2x4s here, ripping them down to the size of a 2x2, two two, but you could certainly use 2x2s two right from the hardware store if that's what you're getting. We're going to use these 2x2s two to frame out our sips. Alright, in this part here we're just going to get all the lumber cross cut for framing. I have to admit, the design I came up with for this project had a ton of little tiny pieces. But in order to work with the sips, I had to do it this way to build the framing around them and then go ahead and figure out a way to assemble them. In the end, I'm happy with the results, but I definitely went through and labeled every piece as I was working. Now we're going to go ahead and cut the boards for our shelves. I had some 2x12s from old shelving that I used to make these. They worked out pretty good. Now that they're all done with that, we're going to go ahead and get our plywood ripped down to size. I'm just cutting down some 8 inch Luan here. I actually reclaimed this from a building I took apart and it worked pretty good for this project. I don't think I'd use anything heavier than this because when I all of a sudden done, this thing was pretty heavy. And it was definitely strong enough, so no concerns there. I'll say it again, I can't believe how many different measurements. Here again with the plywood, every piece is almost different. The reason for that is because I overlap the joints. All right, now we're gonna get the insulation cut for the cupboard. Using the roof and knife to score and break the panel worked pretty good. But in the end, it just wasn't good enough for the SIP panels, at least not for me. So I ended up running them over the table saw to clean up all the rough edges. I had to constantly keep going back to my parts list. As you can see, I have two pages of parts list because again, there was a lot of parts to this. When I was designing this, I thought this would probably make a great hive using these SIP panels. But after building this, I'm not sure I want to do all this to build another hive. If you look over towards your left side of the screen, you can see all the pieces of Luan I cut to make the SIP panels. They're just stacked there, they're all labeled, and they're ready to go. That should give you some kind of an idea of how many parts and pieces there are to this. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and get our SIP panels together. I pre-drilled the holes, I glued the ends, and then used three inch construction screws to hold the frame together. When I was putting this together is the time I realized that using that roof and knife to cut the insulation just didn't give an accurate result. And that's when I trimmed off the edges using the table saw. I'm getting ready to put the piece of Luan on, and I'm using Type Bond 3 again. Once I have it glued on, I'm going to put some staples in it, and that'll hold it down securely. I had a ton of leftover liquid nail from a previous project, and that's a good thing, because I must have used three or four tubes on this. I'm spreading the liquid nail out and putting the foam board in to hold everything together. 
I used liquid nail on the foam board parts and then I switched back to glue for the wooden parts. I'll put the final piece of glue on, staple it, and that's how I build all the sips for this whole project. While I'm waiting on those sip panels to dry, I'm going to head over to the table saw and make these vent holes in our shelves. This will allow the heat to move through the cupboard a lot more easily. Using the table saw, I made four 1 8 inch slats in each of the shelves. I used a piece of masking tape on the table saw so I'd know when to stop and start. As it turns out, the 1 8 of an inch wasn't adequate enough to allow air circulation. After testing it out, I ended up using the router to make half inch wide grooves. I also ended up making the half inch grooves on either edge of the board. So there ended up being six half inch grooves in order to allow adequate air circulation. And then I just ripped and cross cut some pieces for the shelf supports. And now my favorite part, assembly. I started by installing the shelf supports. But well, what I actually should have done was start by measuring because I guess I put it in the wrong place. But once I got all the shelf supports in on the one side, I went over to the other side and did the same thing. The shelf supports are glued to the sip panel and I put in the screws down into the frame of the sip panel to give it the most support. Once I had all the shelf supports in, I put the back of the cabinet down and lined up all the pieces to see how they're going to fit. I then went ahead and glued. This is that overlapping joint I was talking about. One of the reasons why all the pieces were different was this overlapping joint. I had to get in my trusty bucket and get some more of these 3 inch screws out. I had this whole bucket full of screws one time from this building I took apart and I've been using them for the last 3 years. They've helped out in a lot of different things. Once the sides are installed, I went ahead and put the bottom on. Here's another shot of my bucket. Just reminds me that lumber is not cheap. This whole project was basically recycled, except for a couple things. I didn't have the insulation. I had to buy that. That was about $25. And I bought some hinges and some hardware, as well as electronic components we'll get into next. And this is about the time I broke a drill bit. Seems like it happens every project. So I actually bought a whole pack of 964 inch drill bits since that seems to be my favorite. And I allow myself one per project now. I figure it's easier to put the electronics in before I hang the door. So I'm going to do that now. The electrical components for this build are pretty simple. It's basically an incandescent light bulb that provides the heat and a temperature controller. I'm installing the light that will provide the heat in the bottom of the cabinet, and this is for two reasons. The first reason is heat rises, so it makes the most sense to be down here in the bottom. The second thing is, I've read that you're supposed to store the honey in the dark, so keeping the light away from the honey will be the best option. Down here, it'll be in its own separate chamber. For the electric, I'm just using the cheap extension cord. I cut the end off, drilled the hole in the back of the cabinet, and I'm going to hold it in place with liquid nail. This will keep it from slipping and also breaking. I'm mounting the temperature controller with an aluminum wire tie. These are great because you can shape it around the unit and then make two circles and put your screws right through it. I've used these in numerous applications to mount things to the wall and I've always had great results with it. As you can see, I still have the 8th inch holes in the shelf and that's because I haven't done any testing yet. Later on in the video, you'll see how I enlarge those to a half an inch. I'm wiring up the temperature controller here and it basically works like a glorified light switch. You cut the hot wire of your light and go through the temperature sensor, but the temperature sensor also does need its own power. You'll probably want to check out the directions on that if you go to install this because I'm definitely not an electrician. Once the temperature controller is all wired up, I go ahead and install it on the bottom shelf and then go ahead and wire up the light fixture. To secure the wires to the cabinet, here's another trick I use. I staple a zip tie to where I want the wire, and then I use the zip tie to hold the wire in place. I've used this method before, and I've always had great results with it. I set the temperature controller to 75 plus or minus 3 degrees Fahrenheit, and then I went ahead and ran the temperature sensor up to the top of the cabinet. With the sensor at the top of the cabinet, I can ensure the whole cabinet is hitting 75 degrees.
All right, now I can finally go ahead and get her door hung. I'm not going to lie. Hanging this door was not fun, and I probably wouldn't recommend this method going forward. But I used the cheapest hinges I could buy, and they were some just standard door hinges. They were only a couple bucks. But in order to get the door to sit flat, I had to chisel and chisel and chisel to get these hinges in. I'm not sure what I would use next time, but if you guys have any suggestions on better hinges or better ways to chisel this or something, please let me know in the comments below. Once the door is on, I put some weather stripping down. This is just quarter inch weather stripping, and this will help keep the heat in the cabinet where I want it. In order to provide a nice tight seal, I went ahead and put some clasps on here. They also lock if you have this in an area that might be accessible, like outside or in your garage. I suppose you could even put this out by the road if you could run a cord out there and have it in your honey stand. If you're wondering what that waits for, that's to compress the door down on the weather stripping and hold it in place while I install the clasp. I've used this technique before and it's good to have these weights laying around for something. Well there you have it guys, the heated honey cupboard. Hopefully this will keep my honey from crystallizing in the future and I always have it ready to sell when somebody shows up. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up. Thanks for watching guys, I'm B-Boy Bill and we'll see you next time.